Hey, Somerville, I am back. I am back again. Janet Cormier uh, just finished up my own show, which was in February, to bring you still another gifted Somerville artist with a great smile and very nice glasses, please. Yes, this is Stephen Cabral, who is one of, I say, one of the few artists that's ever actually gone through and researched to make sure that I was legit. <laughs> I love that. And I was so drawn because what I will do is look at artwork from the SOS website and I saw your work and it actually looks like it's carved and it's so wonderful. So I said, this man has to come on the show and he did. So thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. So. And now tell us about your process because, uh, oh, also I should mention Stephen's work will be on exhibit for the month of March and um, yes, for the month of March, yep. and you will be treated to some wonderful, playful, with the eye type things. I love the way this stuff is dancing, and it's, n and it's still, still, you do wonderful line, linear, and imagery. Please tell us about it. Oh, thank you. Um, so, this isn't caustic, it's mostly um, hot wax I work with. Um, do you want to talk about the process or oh, just my Whatever you want, it. yeah, that's right. Um, well, this one right here is a series I've been working on since uh, November. It's called Yukio, and it's basically, it's a Japanese word, the modern definition for it is a uh, floating world, uh, to be not bothersome, not to be bothered by anything. Um, I was more particularly drawn to the phrase floating world because it kind of really represents what I'm trying to achieve here with the shapes. Trying to like have the shape like flow on this vacant atmospheric um, space wise. Mm -hmm. um, that's one concept. And the other concept I'm really interested in is about the process, the memory, the history, and, and all that jazz. What do you so, mean about the history and the memory? Um, about the process. I feel like a lot of these layers are very transparency. Oh, for the so, encaustic working for with the For the encaustic work, yeah. So it has. Um, Why don't you explain to the audience what that involves? Um, so basically, I have a, a hot griddle, and I have a bunch of like wax bar that I buy. It is highly uh, pigmented. Mm -hmm. Then I mix with the encaustic medium and add the color to it, and I melt it on the griddle. Uh, on the griddle, correct? Um, Why do I think pancakes right now? But anyway, go ahead. <laughs> well, I think I say that pancake yeah. griddle. Mm -hmm. So, um, and it's very much like oil painting, you know what I mean? Stuff I'm dealing with like heat and I like paint the wax over it. Then there's also a process called fusing. I don't know if you know what that no. is. So basically I have a heat gun or torch and I just basically fuse the layers. So the whole purpose of like a caustic, you have to fuse the bottom layer on top of the layer to like stick together so it won't like fall off. And that's like really time consuming. It's a technique that you learn how to like really master like after so many practice. Um, yeah, so. It's interesting because this is wood that it's on. So when yeah. you're talking about you have a flame going, mm -hmm. that's a lot of skill. That sounds scary to me. Yeah, yeah. It's not that bad. I mean, I, you have to be really fast at it, you know. Um, you can't really just stay still in one area because you're going to burn it. You know what I mean? You just have to, like, move really quickly. I don't really work with the torch at all. I tend to work with the heat gun because I feel it's okay. safer. Um, and also, I don't think it's really ideal to have like flame going on in my studio, consider I work uh, with oils as well. Um, so it's like it's just more of like a safety precaution. So. And also, I know for a while, encaustic also required a lot of ventilation. Mm -hmm. So, um, and you're using, are you using beeswax or is it? Yep, it's beeswax. So mostly it's beeswax and Jamar varnish, uh, not Jamar varnish, Jamar uh, resin. Mm -hmm. And it's like a crystal like, and you just melt it and cook it to make the medium out of it. But yeah, it's mostly all beeswax, like filter beeswax, so. It's wonderful though. Yeah. How long does it take to do a piece like this? Uh, so for this piece, it really depends. It could take me about like two weeks up to a month. Um, I also put oils in it too, like to create this really fine lines. And yeah. I have to let it dry first before I put another layer in it. So it's like dry completely. I've learned my lesson when I have like a layer on top of uh, like wet oil, it tend to like bleed a lot and mm -hmm. I don't want that kind of effect. So I want it to be like really clean, pristine lines. So how do you do that? You have to wait for it to cool then? I have to wait till it cool, that's ideal. Um, then I get a ruler and a razor and I just like slice it, just create um, a little um, gap and I just like fill the oil on top of it and just like wipe it clean. So, so. this is a real labor intensive yeah. 
It's an act of love. It's a labor of love, but it's also labor intensive. And when you come to see the exhibit, I would suggest that you look at it sideways too, because it looks as though it's, um, it's relief. Yeah. It, lo it plays with the eye, and it makes you think that this is not flat. It makes it seem like it's standing up. Mm -hmm. And so I kept looking at it several times going, it's playing with my eyes. And, it, and these lines, it gives it a lot of movement. Mm -hmm. And it takes a lot of precision to get these lines straight. Yeah. Yes, two years of like practicing to really like nail it. I mean, it's not quite perfect yet, but I will in a couple of years. Um, and I'm really glad that you have a sense of movement because that's what I really want to achieve, like really speaking in my work. Cause, um, I'm really obsessed with geometry a lot of way. I don't know why. God I think bless you. It wasn't my favorite, but God <laughs> <No>. <laughs> bless you. It's very, very spiritual for me. Um, so I really try to think about the color, the composition, and the line, and how it like, interacts like, on the plane. And I really want it to be like a lot of movement involved. Um, I know it's like 2D, it's not really a 4D art project, but I want people to visual, like, see that it is moving, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like I'm looking at a mobile. A what? A mobile. Oh, really? And I feel oh, yeah. like it's, it's moving. Now, are, is encaustic done on canvas or always on a wood? It's or? always on the wood. So if you do it on canvas, it's wax. It's, it's going to break because yeah. it's like too flexible. Yeah. Um, there is a way to put wax on canvas. It's cold wax, and it's a little bit more flexible. And I use that in my other work. So. Oh, okay. So if you can help me move yeah. this down and... And if, just turn it to the turn it around so people can see the sure. panel. Let me just show them. This is what we're talking about. It's on wood. Yep. And then, because you're inspiring people right now. Oh, really? Yeah, people, oh, I hope so. People are like, oh, I want to do that too. And so let me. Oh, I highly recommend it. It's a wonderful, very sexy medium. I have um, never heard anyone talk about art as they're making it as a sexy medium. Oh, it's just the process and everything. I mean, just the, the art making activity, it's very sensual, you know what I mean? You really get to know the medium, you get to know yourself, and it's like you're really exploring the unknown. And the result that comes out of it is like, oh my God, I made this. Like, I never knew this is it about me, you know what I mean? It's like. It is amazing yeah. that when you do something and you're like, oh, I really did that. And yeah. people see, things in it that you didn't even see. They see beauty in it that you didn't even see. And it, it's just amazing to me because we're doing it and we're in it and yet we still miss things. Yeah. And other people, the good ones, can see the love that we've put into it and you lose yourself. And actually your work is easy for the viewer to lose themselves in mm -hmm. because the, your choice of colors, um, there might be a temptation to do the 60s bright colors but you do a very serene palette, so it's easy to follow. Oh, great, thank you. And I love this up here, the shapes. It wasn't good in geometry, but I yeah. know that, is that a rhombus or something, or doesn't have to be? This, mm -mm. But I love the way it points out. Yeah. And it has almost like a cartoon feature up there because of the gray and white, mm -hmm. but then down here it's grounded. And it actually looks like each of these lines is carved. Yeah, they are carved, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're really carved. So this is all carved on line I created using the razor blade. Then I put oil inside of it to like bring out the colors. Um, I'm obsessed with thin lines. That's the other thing. Um, I don't know why. I think it's... For me, I think lines are like really innocent a lot of way, I guess. I guess when people start to draw, the first thing they do is add a line, you know what I mean? It has a very like innocent, childlike play, you know what I mean? It's the first step. It. It's the first step, yeah. It's like, but I always add a line the last step. It's like, I don't know, it's just easier to like organize my compositions. Like. I really feel like if I turn this sideways, it would be a mobile, Yeah. just dropping. And it would, like a Calder mobile or something. Yeah, yeah. And it would just be these fine pieces of, of material and it looks transparent in ways because you've done things, you've played with the light. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you come up close, you don't touch the artwork, but you can, when you come up close and then walk away, yeah. it really plays with the eye. Yeah. And there's all this motion. And I love the way you have this receding. So with the layer mm -hmm. of white or gray, it, it just adds to it. Not everything is right there. 
and yet you balance it off with this. The black this, lines? Yes, yeah. and then I love the way the lines get thinner and thinner and closer together. Yeah. My God, that's a lot of work. <laughs> that must be so much work. It takes some time. I mean, I really try to create the movement and just like really play with the surface and everything. One thing that's great about Encasa, you can really play with the transparency. Um, I know you can do that with oils, but I never really had any success with oil. Well, Encasa, I really can. Um, it just really adds a lot of life, a lot of depth, and it's just like an amazing dimension to it. Like, it does. Like it, here, it's like it's almost like a cloud cover. Yeah. And then suddenly it gets this vivid. And again, your color, your palette, very simple, mm -hmm. um, but very elegant. <clears throat> Excuse me, very elegant and um, playful at the same time. I could see some kid getting lost in this, and I can see an adult getting lost in yeah. it also. And it looks like gold instead of, like, <clears throat> it will look like a brown and then a gold. Yeah, the lines, maybe? Yes. Yeah, yeah. When you come, you have to come awake. Yeah. To this to this exhibit because it will play with the eye, yeah. and you, again it's you walking away and then coming close, um, the imagery, and the care that's put into developing this, um, I can't even imagine. I'm such an impatient person. That's why I work in acrylic. Oh really? <laughs> and I have ADD, so I could never do this. Yeah. And I'm like. Oh, how does he do that? Oh, that's not true. Anybody can do this. You know what I mean? If you just have like the patient and well, that's it. No vision. patience. <laughs> no patience. Maybe the vision, but no patience. But if you like acrylic, you might like a caustic because it doesn't really dry at all. It just hardens like after a few minutes when it cools down. You know, so you just have to be careful not to burn yourself. <laughs> well, the thing too is that yours is so precise, and yet it floats. It just looks like it's floating in air. You know, it's also like a kite. And I just love that airiness and that feeling of springs coming and problems will rise up. It, it's just so, um, so meaningful. Yeah. I can see how you lose yourself in it. And uh, did you, how did you find this medium? Um, so the first time I heard about this medium was back in college. Uh, when I was at Mass Art, like a heart, um, like heart history course, um, I think they talk about caustic like during the Roman times. They use it to like decorate the dead's coffin, and I think it was like wax, and it really works well. And I didn't think anything of it, you know what I mean? Till like about a couple of years ago, I was doing oil for like the last 15 years, and I wanted to do something different, you know what I mean? So I thought about acrylic. I'm like, mm, I don't know if I want to do acrylic. I was reading a book one day, and I saw the word acoustic, and it just like. Bing. I'm Triggered. like, oh, it's triggered something. So I did some research on it. I watched a lot of YouTube video. I ordered like a bunch of books. I read a like tons of articles to like really understand the medium. And I was like, oh my God, I really want to do this. So I ordered like the supplies. Like it took me about two months to like order the supplies, gather them, because they can be a little pricey. Um, I think May of 2014, I did my first piece. It was like really horrible and crap because I had like no idea what I was doing with it. We love like, that he's so honest. <laughs> um, it's, it's part of the process, you know, so it's great. A couple months, it really grew on me. So, I mean, I loved the first day. I was like really frustrated that I didn't really understand the medium at all. It was just like fighting with me. It's like, no, this is not how it works, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, um, so I kept doing research and I just kept like giving myself to be a little bit more patient. Then one day it just clicked. Like after all that struggle, all that work, it's like it finally made sense to me. Like I finally understood the medium. I mean, I know I have a lot to learn about the medium, but it's, I'm very happy where I am right now, you know what I mean? So I'm at a point now where I can like push a little bit further mm -hmm. and just constantly like explore, you know, so. Well, I'd like to trade this one now for this piece. Oh, title for that? Is there a title? Uh, they're all like, Yukio series. Oh, okay. Yeah, so this is Yukio one. This is the first one I've done. This is back in November. Um, this big piece is Yukio five, and this one is Yukio three. So. And he'll bring the others, the four and one or two, whichever ones are missing. <laughs> he'll bring them. Um, I one thing I didn't mention before is the delicacy of the background, because you've made it almost like a cloud-like. Mm -hmm. Because there are hints when you come in to see it, you're going to see hints of color. And it sort of, it gives it that floating sky imagery. Yeah. And it gives it motion. It gives it a lot of motion. 
And uh, so you discovered this, you worked at it. I mm -hmm. love your passion when you're ta talking about it. Okay. Everybody can <laughs> see, like, yes, this man loves what he's doing. Yeah, yeah. And how much time do you spend in the studio um, making, creating your art? Oh, okay. Um, so I do have a full-time job. So I try to be in the studio like during the week after work. Um, not a lot though. It's like minor little things I try to get done. But I'm usually in the studio like Friday night from like 7 p.m. till midnight. That I work on Saturday morning and to Saturday night. And sometimes I go into Sunday. So I'm there mostly on the weekends. Mm -hmm. So like total of hours, I want to say I put in roughly 15 to 25 hours in one weekend, like just okay. working. So I'm there a lot. It's like. And do you sketch? Do you sketch out, or is it all coming from? Um, when a you lot just of my decision make is very arbitrary, but if I feel like I'm stuck, I do like sketch out the idea just to give me some ideas. Um, one thing I learned, if I make a lot of mistake on a piece, it's really hard to clean up. Uh, things get really stuck, it's really not worth it. So I do try to sketch as much as I can before I like start laying like the shape and the line into the uh, piece. And you're not doing anything on this, on the wood, you're just laying it out yeah. as you see it in your head. Correct. Yes. And so you're putting down the larger blocks of color. So I actually work on the, ba the, the base first, the background. Okay. And that could be like about three to six layers and it's really time consuming. And that could take me about like two to four hours just like really build up that layer. So this one, for example, this cloudiness. So originally, if I remember correctly, it was like an orange base. And this white beige cloudiness is actually pigment sticks. Um, it's something there, um, I don't remember the company, but pigment stick is the ore stick, and it's really compatible with wax. So I just like rub it all over it and just like rub it in and let it sit for like a couple of hours so it won't get too wet. Then I put a layer over it that kind of create this really magical. Another layer of the pigment stick? Uh, another layer of the wax. Oh, okay. Yeah, the clear wax, and that kind of creates like the really cloudiness to it, so. And the floating atmosphere. The, the floating the, atmosphere, yeah. I love that it just looks like you're just, it's just like clouds. It's the beauty, it's the lightness of clouds. Yeah. And then you do this magical thing, which I noticed this, the twirling of the colors in, in the orange piece. Yeah. I mean, you've done it in other places, but it's very prominent here. And it's very exciting. Yeah. And as you said, sexy, it's very seductive. And it's just these lines, you just manage to fill in and just get just the right amount of color. Yeah. And it, it gives it sort of a sunset look. Yeah. The, the color, yeah. I love lines. <laughs> now, to give you another image, it's like the Zaken Bridge in a way. It's looking at the Zaken oh, Bridge kind of right, yeah. when it's lit up. Yeah. It's that, but yours is far better. Yeah. Well, thank you. But I do Far love better. that bridge, though. <laughs> but it, it has that, you feel like you can cross through in the lines and in space. And you work with a very simple palette. Yeah. Are these your favorite colors? The orange, um, the blue? You seem to favor the blues. The blues, I, I love all colors. So my idea behind color, I think there's a grammar of color behind it. You know what I mean? So. I feel like too much color can be a little bit too busy, so I figure like maybe if I simplify a little bit, it's a little bit more ethereal, um, more like beautiful, um, mm -hmm. it's a composition. So I think about like complementary colors, um, monochrome, it's like all that stuff that really works well together. So uh, I feel like less is more, I think, for me. It's like, But it's a lot of work. It's yeah. not just, because to do the lines and then to, how do you get the lines so straight? Okay, oh, that's a secret. a secret. Okay, it's a secret. I just realized when I said that. That's a secret. But no, I'm happy to share, Ashley. That's no big deal. Well, no, the, the mystique, they'll come and they'll okay, ask you right, for yeah. it. Now you have to come in because now you want to know how he does this. Um, but when you see it, it, it's like the stuff raises up. It's yeah. like you see, it, it's very um, magical. Yeah. Because you're sitting here and we're looking at it sideways. I'm looking at it sideways. And I see all these lines and I feel like, oh, I can just travel underneath this one and go through here and I can travel underneath. And it's, it's a lot of movement, which a lot of artists struggle with to get movement in their work. Yeah. Now, were you always an abstract painter? Uh, nope, I discovered abstract like about three years ago. Um, all through my 20s and early 30s, I did a lot of like realism. 
and I liked it. I just got really bored with it. Um, I was just not really into it. My heart was not into it, and I just need to like spice things up. So I explore abstract. Um, fell in love with it the first time I did it. It really, all the ideas I have, the feeling I have, really conveys well in the abstract language. I think, um, especially dealing with like depth and color and like movement and all that stuff. So. Yeah, I love it, and I'm going strong. Um, I feel like the more I do it, like the better I get at it. So, like it's great. Yeah, I abstract. I, I always need. I try to do abstract, but I just can't. Yeah. I always land up making faces. Oh really? Yeah. I just. Uh, I land. Next thing I know, it has a nose, and then from there, it's just done. It's done. So I make lots of faces. I cannot, for at this time, I just am not. I love abstract yeah. art. Um, I love Calder. I love. Who are your inspirations for abstract? Oh, it's all mixed. It's both abstract and realism. Um, I love Frank Stella. Mm -hmm. He's just an amazing artist, like all the shape and construction of the shape and everything. Uh, Howard Hirsch, it's amazing. He's contemporary an artist. Uh, Kathy Cantwell, she's another amazing artist from like New Jersey. Um, I even love like Lucian Freud, he, especially his drawing, because I love his line quality. It's just like beautiful. Uh, his line work really inspired like to make these kind of lines. Um, they're just really delicate. It's very lively. It's just, like beautiful. Uh, uh, so many artists I really just look up to. Because like. I love abstract, but then when I asked you the question, I'm trying to think, who do I, who can I name? And I only knew one or two of the people that you, you've spoken of. Oh, okay. But I, I know when you go to the museum, I'm always, you can't touch, but I always want to, like, yeah. especially when they have a Calder. Yeah. I just want to. Yeah, I have a tendency, like, uh, off in the bell like the alarm all the time because yeah, I'm a little too close to it and the guard is like ah back up it's like I'm oh, sorry <laughs> but the, the guards do like to sometimes talk about the art yeah they do so. they do now if you could inspire people to I know you have lots of positive energy yeah um, what words of inspiration would you give to artists out there because this is a tricky medium yeah um, just be determined, I guess. D don't give up, you know what I mean? Just keep going. Don't try to control the medium too much. Just let the medium control you, I guess, a lot of way. And just really accept for what it is and learn from it, you know, so. Is it emotional when you're laying down the colors? Yeah. For me, it is emotional. Because as you, as you were explaining that, that's what came to mind, that yeah. there is emotion in there. And you're just using a different language to express it. Yeah. And any other thoughts, like, uh, have you ever been discouraged and people say, give it up, and so you just tell them, go away? Or? I just tell them to go away, because I'm not going to listen to them, you know what I mean? I know what makes me happy, and this makes me really happy, so I'm just going to keep going. If it feels good, I'm just going to keep going, you know what I mean? Um, art to me is like the oxygen to my blood, it's like what keeps me alive, you know? And I'm just going to just keep going till the day I die, so... Which is way off, people. It's way, way off. off, way off. <laughs> that was a little dramatic, but that's all right. <laughs> but I liked it. I liked it. But it, it is. It's what you feel. Yeah. And sometimes there are naysayers out there that will tell you negative things, and they'll say, well, I don't get this, and I don't get that. Yeah. But really, um, it's about you. It is a personal yeah. message that you're sharing. And at some level, you're sharing it, but you don't even care sometimes mm -hmm. if they get it because you've said it. Yeah. And it's your language, it's your words, and it takes your breath away. Yeah. And um, how and discipline, how focused do you stay? How long do you, one piece would take? Um, like in one section or like overall? Overall. Overall. It really depends on the piece. It could take me about like up to two weeks, the most like a month okay. or a month and a half. Um, a lot of my large scale oil painting, which I I can wish I can bring it here, but it's like too big. That could take me about up to six months to a year. It's really time consuming, a lot of my stuff. Because I deal with a lot of layering, a lot of transparency, and I have to give some time to dry completely before I put the next layer over. And then you work a full time job. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's squeezing it in on the weekends and how we squeeze in yeah. our time. It's really it's amazing how we find time yeah. to do it and it gets expensive. Yeah. Yeah. If there's a will, there's a way, so. Mm -hmm. And that's what art is. Yeah. When we produce it, it's, it's, every time you see a piece of artwork, it's the will, and then there was a message, the way that artist went about it. Mm -hmm. 
And despite anything that people might have said, it's like, you know what, I'm just not listening. Because you do go to a point where you don't hear anything else. You just hear the work. Yeah. And that to me is always amazing. Don't give in to those voices. I don't care what they say. Because they couldn't do it, so they don't want you to do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and your work will be in the SCAT gallery for the month of March. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, everyone come down. He will have a reception. Stephen will have a reception, but we're not, we're not going to give the date now. And um, then you'll get to speak to the artist. He's also wonderful for going to receptions, too, because he came to mine. He really livened it up. Yeah. So um, it would be gr great for you to come down, talk to this artist. He's very generous with his information. Oh, thank you. You know, and thoughtful. He'll give you some tips and inspire you. And you'll just keep producing, and then you'll say, it was that Stephen guy. He's wonderful. So, folks, it's time to, you know, it's time to go now. I was so inspired, I almost forgot. Thank you, Jason. And so this is Janet Cormier, Art at Scat with Stephen Cabral, Jason Corey over at the side, right? And um, as I always say, assalamu alaikum, which means peace be to you. And produce your art in peace and have a good time with it. And come on down here, too because you're gonna come and see this artwork and meet the artist, you're gonna love him. So, and uh, community access television, that's where it's at. And you get people like Jason, like Hans, like Erica, like David, like Fallon, like Brian, did I forget anyone? Like Henry, like Yvette. You get all these fabulous people and you get to meet them and everyone's doing something in, te something in the medium in the media so it's the best you can't see jason he's stunning he's very cute <laughs> and um, he did a lot to help us set up so it is i i just love the work i love the work and i love being here and talking to you thank you great thank you so much bye till next month